2004, I was an assistant United States attorney in Utah. I was an appellate attorney. I handled primarily a, a criminal appeals before the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Tenth Circuit. Line prosecutors in the office used to come to me regularly for consultations on cases they had that were likely to result in an appeal. On one occasion, the prosecutor brought to my attention the case of United States versus Weldon Angelos. Weldon Angelos was a young man in his mid-twenties. He was the father of two. He made some mistakes. He decided to sell marijuana. He was caught selling marijuana on three occasions over a 72-hour period. He happened to have a gun on his person at the time. As it turned out, the way our minimum mandatory sentencing laws within the federal system overlapped and were applied to that case, produced a 55-year minimum mandatory sentence. U.S. District Court Judge Paul Cassell really lamented this fact. He looked at the law. He saw that this was a manifestly unjust sentence. I mean, this man clearly had made some mistakes, and yet he didn't deserve to be in prison until he was 80. Nonetheless, Judge Cassell pointed out in his opinion that his hands were tied. There was nothing he could do. The only institution that could change this outcome, that could change this set of laws, was Congress. It's one of the reasons why when I got here, I realized this was something I wanted to work on. And it's why I'm proud to be part of this bill. We've seen the federal prison population explode since 1980. It's increased eight or 900 percent since 1980. This reflects not a nearly tenfold increase in the crime rate over that 35-year period. It instead reflects a combination of things, the over-criminalization of the law, the over-federalization of criminal law, and the excessive use of minimum mandatory penalties within the federal system. I'm grateful to Chairman Grassley, who has made this possible, who has worked with us with this bipartisan group in order to bring this forward. I'm grateful to the bipartisan group of senators uh, and their staffs who have worked on this. I'm especially grateful to Senator Durbin, uh, who's been my ally on this from the beginning. It, it was more than two years ago that he and I put together this bill, the Smarter Sentencing Act, which is an important component of the legislation that we're announcing today. Now, while this bill doesn't solve all the problems I in our society, it doesn't solve all the problems in our criminal justice system, it goes a long way, and I'm proud to be a part of it. This is an example of one of the many areas in which we can legislate on issues that are neither Republican nor Democratic. They're neither liberal nor conservative. They're simply American. I'm proud to be a part of it, and I thank my co-sponsors.